And we're back with some more Pittsburgh Penguins historical challenge mode. And this one, we are on July 1st of 1986. And the Montreal Canadiens are the Stanley Cup champions of year number two. Now, what I've gone ahead and done is replace some of our assistant coaches who had the very non-physical physical preference. So now we have Fred Shiro as our defensive coach and Jacques Demers as our offensive coach. And then you have Bob Cameron as our skill coach. So you got replacements for three assistant coaches. I've gone ahead and offered contract extensions to Lemieux, Bullard, Ari, and Bodger. I have also approached Ed Belfour with an offer. And in free agency, there is actually Peter Klima, a 21-year-old winger, two and a half star ability, very good offensively, it looks like. So of course, had to go ahead and offer him. As of right now, we only have one goaltender in Chevrolet, but don't worry, I have a solution to that. As I have also offered a couple of pretty big trades that we will see in a minute when they pop up on the news. So with that, let's advance to the draft on the third. All right, so we have the draft. The trades have not gone through yet. We do have our first round pick this year, but we do not have a second or a third. So what are we working with here at pick number 18? We have Rob Brown, half-star ability to an half-star potential, decent personality. I think that's going to cause any team harmony issues, at least. It looks like everybody else below him is not even really close. You might be able to make a case for Stefan LeBeau here. Or George Palawa. He's already a one-and-a-half-star ability, but he doesn't have much potential either. Only a one-and-a-half-star potential. So I think it's between Palawa and Rob Brown. Palawa is obviously much better right now. And you know what? Just given that we're sort of on a time limit here, we only, we only have about... What is it three years left i think the end of 1988 89 is our maximum i think i'll just take palawa because he might even land a roster spot this year with these kinds of ratings so yeah i'll take him welcome to the pittsburgh penguins george palawa so with that we are in round four and there's almost nothing left so we are just going to finish up the draft just like that and there you go we not only get ed bell for and peter klima signed we also have two trades from the new york rangers St. Louis Blues accepted. So the first trade, our 26-year-old winger, Scott Gruel, two seconds and a third for 88 and 89. So doesn't really matter at that point, right? <laughs> the challenge is going to be over by then. In exchange for the 29-year-old goalie, Glenn Hanlon, a three and a half star ability goaltender, something we've solely been needing over the past couple of years. His goal saved above average is very good over the past couple of years with a 6.64 and then a 22.81 in year number one. 896, 891, looks very good. And you know what? This actually makes sense for the Rangers as well because they do have John Van Beesbrook, who is ahead of Hamlin on the depth chart, and he's seven years younger. So I figure Hamlin's probably going to be phased out at some point, likely sooner rather than later. So it makes sense for the Rangers. It makes sense for us, given that we really need a goaltender. So I'm, not, I'm more than willing to... Part with a couple of seconds in the third year, along with Scott Gruel, who, I mean, he's a decent depth forward, but nothing too spectacular. A complete trade, there it is. Glenn Hanlon, welcome to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then, quite possibly the bigger offer with the St. Louis Blues, the 22-year-old Troy Loney, two-star ability to an half-star potential, pretty good defensively, but his personality is not something that I like. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Never any drama surrounding him, so that's good but he rarely reacts well when things don't go his way. Not something we need here. Only 18 points last year, 58 grade. Two first round picks, one for 1987. I believe that's top 10 protected. And then one for 1988, that is not protected at all. And then the 19 year old defenseman, Frederick Stillman, who we have his rights, but we do not have him signed. And then coming back the other way will be Rob Ramage, a three and a half star ability defenseman. Now keep in mind, St. Louis, is rebuilding according to their team status. Trade makes sense for them. They're getting a couple of really good draft picks, a prospect in Stillman and a young player in Troy Loney. And they're giving up two of their veterans in Rob Ramage and then Brian Sutter, the 29 year old winger, three and a half star ability. I think these two veterans are really gonna round out our roster quite nicely. So we are going to complete this trade. There it is. That is two really big trades for your Pittsburgh Penguins. And all of a sudden, we are looking like a much different team. As we see in goal, you have Hanlon, Chevrier, and Belfour. Obviously, Belfour is not going to be playing this year with Hanlon and Chevrier ahead of him. But it was good to get him signed anyway. Defense is looking much better. You got Mantha, Ramage, Bodger, Carlson, Merzen, Green, Hillier, Buskis, and McSorley. All of a sudden, Charles with down. Then at forward, you have Lemieux, Bullard, Ari, Babak, Hannon, 
Stutter, Young, Jarvis, Shedden, Tekanen is all of a sudden a two and a half star ability. I, I mean, last I knew he was half star ability, but you know what? I'll take it. And then you have Klima, two and a half star ability, McBain at a two star ability. Uh, somehow, Randy Burge, who won the Calder Trophy with 64 points in 68 games last year, dropped to a one star ability. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> to be honest with you. Maybe it was some sort of trade off between Tekanen and Burge with their star abilities because I, I, I'm pretty sure Burge was a two and a half star ability himself prior to the year switching over to July 1st and then all of a sudden they, they just seemingly swapped overall ability there I, I don't know I honestly have no idea how that happened it doesn't make any sense whatsoever in my opinion though <laughs> 64 points and 68 games played for Burge wins the call to trophy and then all of a sudden just nope just drops right down to a one star ability at 20 years of age, nonetheless. And then you have Rulston and Semenko. So looking much better overall. Still very confused as to how that happened with Burge. But again, there's no question that we have drastically improved as a team. And we should be competing for the Stanley Cup this upcoming season. And hopefully for years to come with guys like Lemieux, Bullard, Harry, Hannon, all being 25 or younger. And that's just other forwards. Of course, you have Mantha's 25. Ramage was only 27. He got a good few years out of him. Bodger's 20. Carlson's 24. Merzen's 19. This is a very young Pittsburgh Penguins team that will be competing for years to come. So that's why I didn't mind giving up those first round picks. And with that, I think our offseason is pretty much done. That's, I think, everything I wanted to do. So with that, we will make our way to the start of the regular season of year number three. And here's our starting roster for the year number three regular season. You have Chevrolet and Hanlon in goal. On defense, you have Mantha, Ramage, Bodger, Carlson, Merzen, Green, and Hillier. And at forward, you have Lemieux, Bullard, Airy, Annan, Sutter, Babic, Young, Tikkanen, Jarvis, Shedden, Klima, McBain, Burridge, and Rulston. We're now at the waiver draft. I think we'll take a goaltender just as insurance. Because if we, for some reason, get an injury in goal, then we're going to be forced to call... Mr. Ed Belfour up at a one-star ability, which I don't exactly want to do. So I'm going to take Darren Elliott. He's 24 years of age, six foot one, two-star ability. Why not? Look at that. Glenn Hanlon, goalie of the month. 18 games played so far, 900 save percentage. That is something we have been missing this entire GM mode so far. Oh, no. This is the worst injury possible. Mario Lemieux goes down with a shoulder injury indefinitely on March 1st. Which means he's out for the playoffs. Uh, that is like the worst. That's the worst timing. That is the worst timing possible. We're doing all right too. We're 34, 26, and three. It's definitely not what I thought we would be as far as our record. I thought we would improve on last year. I mean, team stats. We're doing. We're doing very well with goal scoring. We're tied for first with Edmonton with a 4.41 and goals against per game. We're actually in 11th with a 3.57. So we've definitely gotten better from last season as far as team stats go. Power plays by far first in the league with a 32.9. And then the penalty kill 12th in the league with a 78.3. So as far as all of that goes, we're definitely a better team this year, but not looking favorable as we are now missing. Uh, why am I in Toronto? <laughs> as we check our injury list, we now are missing an 88 point score in just 52 games for the rest of the season, including playoffs. We're going to have to hope that our depth can come through for us in the playoffs because we're going to need it. And with that being said, we will advance to the end of the regular season. Oh no, we've been dropping games left and right now with, with Lemieux out of the lineup. We've lost our last four. Yeah, and then we tied on the first as well. That was after Lemieux got it. Like that that game right there, I think, is when Lemieux got injured. And then ever since then, we've just been taking loss after loss. We are now 34, 30, and 4. Still third in the division, fifth in the conference, but that could change with how we're going right now. All right, we are at the end of the regular season of year number three. We finished 40, 34, and 6. Good enough for third in the division and sixth in the conference. So we did make the playoffs. Now a quick look at the player stats. Bullard with 114 points picked up the pace when Lemieux got injured. Stutter with 84 points. Klima with 82. 68 for Bodger. 63 for Airy. 56 for Babic. 50 for Mantha. 43 for Shedden. 39 for Ramage. 35 for Young. 33 for Tekken in his rookie year. Merzen with 33. 30 for Jarvis, 26 for McBain, Hannon with 21, Carlson with 21, Burge only with 17. I don't know how he went from 64 to 17. That that makes absolutely no sense. I mean, at least he went back up to a one-half-star ability, but I, I seriously have no idea how that 
ability went from two and a half star to one star just like that. <laughs> then you have McSorley with 14, 13 for green and eight for Rulston. And in goal, you have an 887 say presented for Hanlon and an 880 for Chevrier. That is something we have been missing for a while <laughs> in goal. So hopefully Hanlon can pick up the slack with Lemieux out going into these playoffs. And we have the Philadelphia Flyers in the first round of the playoffs once again. I believe this is the third year in a row we are facing them. So here we go. Game number one against Philadelphia will be a 7-6 Philadelphia win. Shots are 43 apiece. Three stars of the game, Marsh, Bullard, and Sinisalo. Game number two will be a 2-0 Philly victory. Come on, guys. This is only a best of three series, so we got to win three in a row now. Shots of 37-25 to in favor of Pittsburgh this time, but Hextall with the shutout. He is on top of it. He's the first star of the game, and then Ramage and Benning are the second and third stars of the game. Come on, guys. This is elimination game number three. All right, there you go. Brian Sutter from Klima makes it 1 nothing. But there's Mark Howe with the goal, makes it 1 1. Oh boy. Tim Kerr with the goal, <laughs> makes it 2 1. Uh, 3 1. Thorison. All right, 3 to 2. Rulston scores from Merzen and Mantha. They're now down by one, heading into the third. Come on, Pittsburgh. Get me one. There it is. Rob Ramage, the offseason acquisition from Bodger and Ari, makes it tight at three, halfway through the third period. And we are headed to overtime. Come on, Pittsburgh. Come on, Pittsburgh. Ah, there it is. Crossman with the goal for Philadelphia. And we are out in the first round this year. Unfortunate. Shots are 46 to 26. Yeah, that's a well-deserved loss. Three stars of the game, McCrimmon, Mantha, and Kerr. I mean, obviously you can blame it on the fact that we didn't have Lemieux, but still that's just one player. I mean, granted, he is a star of a player, but, you know, the whole reason I made those acquisitions in the offseason was in case something like that happened, then we would have the depth to deal with it, but apparently not. Oh, okay. Never mind. I thought we were st I thought we were still in a five game series for the first round. Apparently not. We're not they've changed to a seven game series now. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering when that was gonna happen. <laughs> so it seems I was lamenting too early. <laughs> so here we go. Elimination, what is this now? Game number four. Yeah, this is game number four. <laughs> I got completely thrown off by that. So we're gonna we'll have to pull off the reverse sweep, but it still is possible. <laughs> it still is possible. Come on, Pittsburgh. Let's get it going. Okay, Dave Poulin with the goal. Makes it one nothing Philly. Uh, there it is, Bob Airy from Tikkanen and Yarvis. There's a goal by McSorley from Arian McBain. Makes it two to one. Oh, two to two, Brian Prop. My Pittsburgh. There it is. Klima from Bodger and Bullard. Stenisala with the goal makes it three to three with 227 remaining. We are headed to overtime. Come on, Pittsburgh. Uh, all right. McCrimmon with the goal. And we are now officially out of the playoffs. Shots are 44 to 26. So it's <laughs> mostly the same kind of game as game number three was. Three stars of the game. Stenisala, Ari, and Prop. And yes, we are now officially out of the playoffs. So we were still swept in the end, unfortunately. And with that, I think we will end things off here. And the next one, we will continue our historical challenge with the Pittsburgh Penguins.